So here we are in a hayfield, Claudio. Hayfield with lots of orchard grass. These are cool wow. season grasses. Oh, look at our friends again. We've got seen our friends the clover before. here. So the nitrogen fixers. Yep, from the before. legume. Here's yeah. the alfalfa. Alfalfa. So they're fixing their own nitrogen. These grasses can't fix their own nitrogen. But these grasses do benefit from the nitrogen that these plants fix because these plants grow their roots and those rhizobia modules, uh, at some point they die. And when those roots slough off and go into the soil, that nitrogen gets converted into a form that these grasses can use as well. And then really when we harvest this and make a bundle of grasses and alfalfa and other things, that increases the nitrogen of the forage itself, yes. which we feed to our animals right, too. Right. Yeah. So it's very desirable uh, for the hay to have these legumes uh, as a major component mm -hmm. uh, for the feed value, the nutritional value for the livestock themselves. So one of the key things that we talked about earlier was the resource uh, limitation. One of the, the fundamentals of uh, kind of growing plants is that they have to have a medium in which they grow so that they can capture those limiting uh, nutrients. And that medium is what we're soil. looking at here is soil. Dirt. And uh, one of the things that somebody uh, said to me once is that if it wasn't for this thin little layer of material at the earth's surface, we pretty much would be toast. So I've carved up a nice chunk of oh, look sod at that. there of soil. You can see the grass plant with its roots here. Again, these are these are cool season grasses, and they uh, over time uh, have been selected to not have an extensive root system. They have a relatively shallow but very fibrous uh, root system that turns over on a on a very fast basis. And by turning over, I mean these roots as they're exploring and winding their way through the soil, they're looking for water and nutrients, and if they don't find it in a short matter of time they die and new roots sprout and grow and look for it somewhere else so you've got a lot of turnover meaning a lot of death and all that death means that these little bits of roots which have carbon in them themselves now become part of that soil right, right? they're contributing to the building of the soil mm -hmm. itself so soil is comprised really of two major things uh, minerals that come from the rock you know the bedrock you can think of it mm -hmm. as the, the thing that's below the soil uh, that rock is weathering, meaning it's breaking apart, and it's breaking apart because of freezing and thawing and nooks and crannies that where uh, minerals slough off. Those minerals contribute from below, so to speak. And then organic matter, which is this dead root material, uh, dead plant material from above, dead critters, mites. Organic and, has to come from something living, it's ultimately. It's anything that was living. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it's crassus form human bodies mm -hmm. when they're buried in the soil. Becomes any organism that, any organism. that re-enters the soil is contributing that organic matter. Mm -hmm. And it's the organic matter mixing with the minerals. So it's sort of the organic matter from above, the minerals from below, and it's them mixing together that create the soil. That's this thin layer that you were referring to earlier. And by thin, we mean, you know, in this part of the world, it might be a half a meter deep maybe a meter deep, mm -hmm. some okay. places even less, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But of course there are places in the world where it's several, several meters deep and it depends on how long it's been developing. So the longer plants have been growing on this, the more this organic material sloughs off and this basically builds up right. over, over time. It takes a long time, but it does build up. It builds up as long as there's more carbon coming in from the dead plant material, ah. mainly the plants. Yeah. As long as there's more carbon coming in from the dead plant material, mm -hmm. then there is carbon leaving the system from microbial respiration. And mm -hmm. so the microbes are the critters that are living in and mm -hmm. in all the nooks and crannies of the soil. And we can't see them, obviously. We can't either. see them. They're, they're, in, they're microscopic. They're -microscopic. Yeah. So, but they're bacteria, they're fungi. You can see fungi occasionally uh, and archaea. And they're in there breaking down carbon because they're heterotrophs. Ah, heterotrophs means they can't get make energy on their own. They have to get it from somewhere else. Where are they getting it from? They're getting it from these roots ah. that break down into little pieces of organic matter. They're accessing that to build their own bodies, but they have to use some energy to build their bodies. So part of that is respiration. Just like you and I respire, and. I respire more than you right now, maybe, yeah. because I'm working harder. Um, I'm just sitting here. CO2 is the product of respiration, 
and CO2 is leaving the soil all the time. Oh, so hold on a sec. So plants are grabbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and slamming it together. And in the process, they also produce oxygen. We basically, as heterotrophs, reverse that. We use oxygen to take that carbon dioxide, break it apart, release that, the, that energy that's in there, but then that carbon dioxide goes back to the atmosphere like that. Right. So it's, in a sense, it's like we're taking photosynthesis and we're re right. reversing the order. And most uh, microbes yeah. are doing that same thing. Yeah. And so they're releasing CO2. Mm -hmm. So when you say the uh, soil is building, mm -hmm. it will only accumulate if on average, over hundreds and thousands of years, the right. input of the plant material is greater than the output from the microbial mm -hmm. decay, mm -hmm. the microbial respiration. Mm -hmm. And obviously, maybe it's not obvious, but that's why we're here, the way we manage this part of the ecosystem mm -hmm. is gonna be critical for whether or not this carbon builds in mm -hmm. the soil organic matter, or whether it depletes, or mm -hmm. whether it stays the same. Mm -hmm. Okay, so back to Soils 101 here. We talked about the minerals coming from below and the organic matter coming from above. One of the key characteristics of soils are physical characteristics that are largely determined by the mineralogy, the minerals that are coming from below. So the mineralogy re relates to the sort of size of those mineral particles. So we have some mineral particles that are quite large, like sand. We have some that are quite small, called clay. And then we have an intermediate category called silt. And it really is just about the size classes. And we'll put a table up in the, mm -hmm. uh, uh, to show what those size classes are. But the, the relative ratio of those three size classes is what comprises soil texture. Hmm. And soil texture is a key physical property of a soil because it relates to how much pore space there is in the soil. And the pore space is critical for how well the roots can grow through it. So this is a very silty, a very silty soil, and there's just all kinds of pore space for these roots to grow through. There really isn't a lot of sand uh, particles in here. Sand particles are big particles that you can see with your eye very clearly, like if you're at the beach. These are this is a silt. And so when um, you say texture, I can actually feel the texture. Is yeah, that and what if the... you take the soil, and it's hard to do it with all these roots in it, mm -hmm. but if you take the soil and actually rub it in your fingers. You know, if it has a lot of clay, you all know what clay is like when you're yeah. spinning a wheel or making, making pottery, pottery yeah. or something like that. What happens when you've got a lot of clay is the particles, they're microscopic. You can't see them with your naked eye. They tend to be kind of flat and they all line up. And when they all line up together, they get very smooth and very strong. And they actually have very strong chemical uh, hmm. um, bonds that hold them together. Hmm. They also have little negative charges all around them that provide places for little pieces of organic matter to um, form um, covalent bonds and that provides a place for carbon to accumulate in the soil in and among those clays. So the soil physical property of soil texture is critical. Another critical property of soil is chemical and that is related to how many nutrients are available in the soil. And we've talked already about the importance of nutrient availability. Um, that largely is uh, determined by how much organic matter is in the soil because the organic matter supplies the nutrients, uh, uh, inevitably, that uh, the plants are able to take up again. And so the chemical part of this is related to exchange sites on the little tiny particles of soil all through this matrix they also have usually little negative uh, um, exchange sites where nu nutrients like sodium and calcium and ammonium and all these different nutrients that the plant needs form ionic bonds with those negative uh, sites and the plant can then use those nutrients by pumping hydrogen ions protons out into the soil solution, those hydrogen protons knock the nutrients off of those exchange sites and the plant then takes up those mm. nutrients. And so this is one of the chemical properties of soil. This is why the chemical property of soil is so key. And one of the main things that we do to measure the chemical property of soils is measure its pH. 
which is basically the concentration of hydrogen ions mm, mm. in the soil. And so when you've got too low of a pH, you've got too many hydrogen ions and not enough nutrients. And if it's too basic, then you've got the opposite situation. You don't have enough to exchange the nutrients and get them into the plants. So, so let me see if I get this. So the, the physical particles of the soil itself are negatively charged? They have negative and yeah. positive charges. Okay. The fact that they have a lot of negative charges is really important. And so those negative charges basically are good sticking places for those positively charged ions. Yes. Sodium, potassium, ammonium. nitrates, ammonium, yeah. things like that. And it's like a little Velcro. You just get the attachment, like little magnets, yeah. you know? And we can undo those magnets if we throw in more protons, more right. hydrogen, which is what determines your pH. Right. And so then you've got these loose nitrogen atoms moving around and the roots can, and the roots can suck those up. I get it. Okay. And if you don't have those, a lot of those negative sites for those nutrients to glom onto, like Velcro, yeah. uh, then they can also be leached down through this, uh -huh. through the soil and below the roots, and they're effectively lost from the agroecosystem. Yeah. So you want those nutrients to be bound up here in the root zone. Near the. But if the water can take them and pull them down then they're gone, and yeah. they end up in our surface waters and in our streams and lakes. Drinking and water. Drinking and, water. Yeah. Yeah, so we want to keep them in here. Mm -hmm. So we've talked about the physical aspects of the soil. We've talked about the chemical aspects of the soil. And the third area is the biological aspects of the soil. And I think you were just looking, I know. <laughs> Claudio was looking at some sort of mite or Look something. Look at this little there. guy. Yeah. So a little, that little orange dot that you see right there, it's actually moving around. Oh, look at that little guy. I, my vision is not as good as it used to be, but it's a mite or a columbola or something like that living inside of the soil, little organisms. And we already talked about one group of organisms, which are the bacteria and the fungi that are doing their business in here, taking advantage of that carbon, that energy yeah. that's stored up there. And these little guys are doing the same. They're eating the microbes and they're eating the other things. So there's an entire little community of organisms that are living here taking advantage of this dead material that, that's sitting there. And so we know that it's critical to have a diverse and abundant ecosystem that has a lot of these biota in it. So mm -hmm. everything from earthworms to, uh, to columbola to mites to uh, mm -hmm. uh, sp springtails. Springtails. Columbola are the springtails. <laughs> columbola yeah. are the springtails. But millipedes and centipedes and other things All like that. All the critters that, that yeah. crawl around through here. Yeah. Um, including then, of course, at the microscopic level, the bacteria and the right. fungi. Right. And what they're essentially doing is breaking down the dead organic matter, the dead plant material, and making it available for themselves, but then eventually making it available for subsequent plant growth in the future. Mm. And the more organic matter there is in the soil, the better, the more it's like a sponge and holds onto that stuff that's it being processed. It just sits there, yeah. So that plants can eventually use uh -huh. it. So there's some critical things about the way we manage agroecosystems that affect all these processes, the physical, chemical, and, and biological. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine that um, making the plants grow as much as we can is generally a good thing. But if we make them grow so much above ground at the expense of root production. Oh, that allocation that thing allocation again. Thing, oh. Then we're kind of we're kind of cutting off the ability to feed those biota. Uh -huh that are below ground. I mean, we do to some to some level, but the more root growth and root production there is, mm -hmm. the more we're feeding those biota. And the more the nutrients there are subsequently available for, for subsequent plant growth. Mm -hmm. There's really not much we can do to affect the texture, the physical part of the soil. That the just texture. is where it is. That, that came from the bedrock. It's not gonna change unless yeah. we come in here with a bulldozer and, well, and yeah. recontour it. Yeah. People do that, of yeah. course. Um, so um, the main ways that we affect these physical, chemical, and um, biological processes are with how we help the plants grow, and then of course, how we disturb the soil. And so in this hay field, if this was just hay year after year after year, it's a perennial grass. The only time that soil ever gets disturbed is when the uh, plants are, are sown, when they're planted in the ground. Seeded in there. And that's a fairly shallow uh, disturbance. Is oh, that look at that. It's an assassin bug. So an assassin bug? Yeah. That sounds scary. Yeah. This is a predatory insect right here. Yeah. Eating Ooh. other insects.
off you go. <laughs> so, uh, not part of the soil food web, by the way, part of the, above, part ground. Of the above ground. Yeah, food. I don't know what yeah. it's doing there. So, um, the way we affect the plants, uh, their production is important uh, for the soil's health. The way we disturb the soil, and in fact, the, the less frequently we disturb it, and uh, the, the less... Uh, so why is that important? Why can't we just till this over and over again? And Well, because when we till it, we break up uh -huh. uh, these roots, and we break up the soil fungi that's trying mm -hmm. to um, explore and work its way through mm -hmm. the soil. This network that's in there, yeah. And just that process that I just did right here, breaking this up, I'm exposing soil aggregates, which are clumps of soil that are all bound together and kind of glued together with uh, the uh, residues of bacteria and fungi. When I break it open, I expose it to the atmosphere and immediately carbon dioxide starts coming off of that. Oxygen the, goes in there. The microbes are going crazy. Hey, free carbon, let's get that carbon. Lots of oxygen. Lots Ooh. of oxygen that wasn't here before. It's like the oxygen bar, you know, and they're <laughs> going nuts. This is great. Is that what happens at an I think so. I it's like, oh, I feel so, I feel, I have never been, it's, but I feel so invigorated. And it's... <laughs> so when that gets cracked open, like it does when a till comes through, a plow comes through, then you expose carbon that otherwise was protected and sort of built into the organic matter and it gets liberated as CO2 and goes back to the atmosphere. Hmm. So if we're talking again about the carbon balance of this system, hmm. uh, what goes in is what comes in through the plants, what leaves is what leaves from the microbial hmm. decay. If we speed up microbial decay and don't alter this, yeah. uh, then we're going to be losing carbon over hmm. time. Another way that I think you can lose soil also is that in the plowing and you've broken up the surface here now this becomes susceptible to just washing away right really those roots and those fungi that were also glomming together the yeah. aggregates uh now that it's soil gone. is is likely it's to free be to lost. move yep. it can move yep. with the wind it could move with water and that's actually what we saw with the uh with the dust bowl example that we started with those perennial plants that were in those uh prairies were plowed up yep. and that made the soil very susceptible to that movement yep. by the physical forces. Were broken, yeah. The aggregation was broken uh, and, and so you, you started to see uh, the wind carrying away the soil particles. Mm -hmm. In this part of the world where we didn't have as much dryness, there was a lot of, uh, a lot of rainfall. Uh, instead of the dust bowl, we had the mud bowl and right. the soils washed away uh, to the streams and rivers and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So the more root production is, the denser the roots are, the, least we, the less we disturb this soil, the more likely it is to stay in place, the more likely it is to be long-term productive, and uh, the more likely it is to sequester carbon from the atmosphere. Mm -hmm.